All right, so Mr. David, let's talk a little bit about bee removal. Okay. What are the steps that we need to know? Well, first off, there's a difference between bees and wasps. Okay. okay. And a lot of people can't tell the difference. In fact, some of the pest control companies don't know the difference. And so it's important to educate. Google knows a lot of things. So if you've right. got something, look it up, go to the images, go to pictures, and you can see there's a distinct difference between yellow jackets, wasps, hornets, and honeybees. Yeah. Best bet, if it's black and yellow, mm. It's not a honeybee. It's not a honeybee. Honeybees right. are orange, brown, black, little muted colors. Bright yellow, yellow jackets. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. We need to know that they are indeed honeybees because if they're honeybees, I can deal with them. If they're yellow jackets, wasps, hornets, that's your pest control company. Right. Yeah, you don't want to deal with those, right? No. <laughs> the second step is we do an evaluation. We come to your home to see what's going on. And sometimes there still are yellow jackets. Oh. So uh, I'll, I'll tell them what to do. But the, the next step is to do a thermal image of the house, to look where they're seeing their bees. And we can actually see the hive in the walls behind bricks. Uh, that is just a first step because okay. the bees incubate the, the brood about 94 degrees, 95 degrees. And that's what we see, but we don't see honey. Okay. The wax and the honey, they keep it cool. So I could have two cubic feet of bee space and then 20 feet of honey. So that gives us a starting place. And then we have to determine if we're gonna do this through the walls from the inside or the outside. About 90% of the hives we remove from homes are in the ceiling joists. They come from the outside of the house and they just go right across the joists as far as they mm -hmm. can. And those we end up doing from the inside. Walls, sheetrock is a whole lot easier to repair than brick. Mm -hmm. But sure. recently had to do a, a brick job where we had to remove the bricks to get the bees out. The, the hive was below the foundation of the house. Wow. The facade, the brick facade, was where they were coming in. And because the bees had been sprayed by a pest control mm -hmm. company, they were trying to get a new exit from the house. And they see light, inside light is the same as the sun. And so they're coming in around the window into the bedroom. When we remove the bees, we cut out all the comb. The brood comb goes into a hive box. Honeycomb goes into a bucket. And there's going to be trash comb. There's going to be comb that's empty, doesn't have anything in it. Or there'll be leavings where we're cutting the brood to fit into a hive frame. And those go into a trash bucket. Wow. The big thing for us is to save the brood. The brood is the babies, that's mm -hmm. the eggs, the larva, and the potential adult bees. Okay. And to find the queen. Uh, without the queen, the hive is basically useless. Do you normally find the queen? I'm about 97% this pretty year. Good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And the queen is it's important because she's the only fertile female. Okay. In the spring and summer, we can always raise up a new queen. But in the fall, it's important to find the new queen and right. make sure that she's in there. When we do work from the inside of the house, we open a window. Okay. We actually right. open the shades so there's light on the glass. The bees that come into the house, instead of going all over the house and crazy, they go straight to the window. All nature wants to get out. Sure. And so when they get to the window, we just vacuum them out of the window and they go into a two-stage vacuum. The bees are safe in there. Vacuum. Okay. Vacuum. But the bees are safe. It's a two, right. think uh, sawdust collectors. Okay. You've got the vacuum over here, but you've got your sawdust being collected here. The buckets that I use, they're basic five gallon buckets. They have eight pieces of plastic foundation Lincoln logged into the bucket. Okay. In the bottom of the bucket is a half inch of foam. Huh. The bees get sucked into there. They hit the foam, they bounce. They, they bounce. have an exoskeleton. Right, right. They're real bouncy. And we can get about twenty to 30,000 bees per bucket. <laughs> wow, <laughs> really? Really, really. And in midsummer, those hives, we can leave with three buckets of bees. Wow. And when we're setting up the new hive, we open the bucket and we release the bees back into their hive. It's, a, it's an eviction, right. it's a, a removal, it's a relocation, but their home smells like home. And so they go right into the box. That. So let me ask you, you said earlier that some of those bees were sprayed. What happens to bees when they're sprayed with a pesticide? Well, they die. Okay. It's a side, you know, right. homicide, pesticide, yeah. right. something's dead. And when the bees are directly sprayed, those will die. But wax is very absorbent. Okay. And a lot of times when people use a can of wasp spray and they spray at a, a hive of bees, mm. that first piece of comb catches the pesticide and stops it and it doesn't enter in the rest of the hive so the bees don't get killed they're not like wasps 
when people call about bees in a house, they're looking at a small nest. They're thinking wasp. The reality is it can be huge. The first few months that they build in a house, they'll build two cubic feet of comb. Wow. That's yeah. cubic That's feet. impressive. And that first piece of wax stops the pesticide. And if the bees can find another exit, then they'll use that as their new entrance. I've seen on chimneys where they've been on one side of the chimney, and they sprayed, and the bees now use the other side of the chimney mm. as their entrance, and they build all the way around the chimney. Wow. What kind of experience do you need to be able to remove bees? You need a background in construction. Mm. You need to understand how mm. houses are built. You right. need to know what's behind Good the walls. Point. And you need to know that there are pipes, there's electricity, there are other things in that wall besides bees. And when we work through those walls, I'm always looking for electricity. This is an exterior wall. They could be bringing electricity along the side and down the wall. And when we find the wires, you don't want to cut them. It's not, <laughs> it's not good for us or the bees. Right. Golly. And I've, right. I've been in situations where there were nine wires coming through. Oh. <laughs> I've been there with the can lights where the bees have built their comb over and around the can lights and the people's ceilings. You know, on a fireplace, you've got the can lights in the front. It really looks nice inside the house, but it makes it difficult in removing the bees because we have to remove all that comb off the wires uh -huh. and off the lights. Right. How about that? So construction, deconstruction. Deconstruction. Okay. And making it possible for the homeowners to get that put back together. I like to call it minimally invasive. The smaller the hole, the better for me. Okay. Yeah. And the better for the contractor who comes and does the repair. Sure. Have you ever experienced a time where the bees were actually dead that you wanted to remove? Several times. Okay. Uh, How was that? Well, it stinks huh. in, in both ways. Right. It, you're thinking 40,000 bees. Mm. One bee doesn't smell bad, but when they're all sitting on top of each other, they start to molder and they smell like a dead dog. Wow. How about it's, that? it's pretty bad. Plus it stinks because there's nothing to save. Huh. So I've had situations where the bees have been sprayed and they're all dead. And the honey is leaking down through the walls. It, it just coats through the insulation. It comes underneath the wall, gets into the padding of the carpet. And one house in Germantown, they actually, they knew something was wrong because their floor was squishy oh. and sticky. Okay. And spraying is never a good answer because in the end, you're going to have a higher cost in the repair because all of that wet stuff has to come out of the house. Wow. If we can get it on the front end before anything gets sprayed, I have little controls that I use to keep the honey from leaking into the house as we remove them. Okay. Catch it, you know, s absorb the honey that's pulled up and get it out. So what happens to the honey though? I mean, does some of that pesticide actually get into that honey, you think? Well, I'm a, I'm a little nervy when it comes to pesticides. Okay. So if I come to a hive that's been sprayed and I can see in the wax that it's been sprayed, uh, that honey's never saved, it's never sure. used. Uh, I talk with the homeowners and, and ask them if they want some of the honey. If the homeowner's willing to eat the honey, mm. they haven't sprayed the bees. Huh. So that honey can be saved and it can be fed back to the bees or it can be harvested and eaten. Wow. So the, the largest hive I removed had 20 gallons of honey in it. 20 gallons? 20 gallons. Oh my gosh. And think a five gallon bucket, about 50 pounds. That's 200 pounds of honey sitting in someone's ceiling. Wow. And if it falls, the ceiling crashes in. Wow, how about that? It's crazy. That's, David, that's some good stuff, man. We appreciate you coming on the show and sharing that with oh, us. Oh, I love coming back here. We know you do, <laughs> we appreciate it. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.